Meredith, I do product development and fun videos like these for Faber-Castell USA. And welcome to our Creativity Club Summer Camp. Today, we will be doing our Build and Grow Treehouse Kit, yay! So a couple little notes about today. I can't hear or see you, so if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat or hit the little question, bar, question mark at the bottom of the screen. Um, occasionally, I will ask you for your opinion, so a little vote here box might pop up on your screen. Um, this will be recorded, so if you if you miss a part, don't worry about it. You can always go back and catch it later. So I can't wait to create with you and do our build and grow treehouse. Hello, friends. We're here with our build and grow treehouse. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay. So we have our instructions. Ooh, some awesome little cardboard pieces and stickers. Ooh, epoxy stickers. These have a little bit of depth to them. Ah, okay, our paintbrush. We'll need that. Some sticky dots. We need those. Our little pipette for water. And just in case you didn't realize, you will need some water because we'll be doing some water coloring and then you'll need some separate water in order to water our seeds. So these are our little trays for what we're going to be growing. And these are our grow mats. We'll talk more about those later. Our glue. Here's our watercolor paints, a whole full palette. Ah, some of our treehouse leaves and our fun little figurines. Our seeds. Some embroidery floss. And all of our pieces to put our treehouse together. Okay, so we'll put our box to the side for reference. And let's start by looking at the instructions. Okay, important information about this paint. We're gonna to wanna to cover your work surface and wear a smock or old clothes so the paint doesn't stain your fabric or other surfaces. Cleanup spills immediately, wash clothing, um, have a cup of water. Yep, we've got that and paper towels. Yep We'll want to remember to rinse our paintbrush or sponge before we change colors when we're painting So that's all the little information about our paint Okay, so prep your grow trays. So we're just going to jump in right here We'll push everything else to the side for now So we're prepping our grow trays which are these little trays right here. One, two, and three. Now you will need a pair of scissors as well. So you can go ahead and grab those if you don't have them. Okay, first, use your dropper to add water to the trays. Fill each one about halfway. So here's our little dropper. Boop, boop. Here's our water. And let's see how many squeezes it takes to fill our trays halfway. So I'm filling my um, dropper up about halfway. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it looks like that's about halfway. So five, um, five of these squeezes seems to fill up our trays nicely. One, two, three, four, and five. And just set that aside so we don't 
ball fit. And our last one. One, oops. Two, three, four, and five. All done. All right, and we'll just keep this to the side because I have a feeling we might need to add a little bit more water in in a little bit. Okay, so the next thing, folding the corners under, place each grow mat inside the trays. Gently press them into the water and let them soak for at least 15 minutes. So we're doing this so it can soak up the water while we're doing other crafting. So in the instructions, it shows you how to fold the mats, but I'm actually going to cut the mat so it fits in a little bit flatter. And you can do it either way, both ways work. So I'm just going to cut off each corner. So it's, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but it'll fit better into our trays that way. So like that. Perfect. And you, you don't have to cut off that much, just a little bit, just the corners. So. There we go. So our little mats will get nice and soaky, nice and wet. Ooh, there's a big amount of water on that one. All right, and then our last one. Here we go. Okay. And we'll go ahead. Let's see. So that once your grow mats have absorbed the water, sprinkle a few seeds. So we need to wait about 15 minutes until these soak up the water. So here we go. Okay. So we'll come back to that, but we'll go ahead and start our tree. So, here's our seeds. We'll put those to the side. Our stickers and all that we'll put to the side. Okay, so let's paint. Start by painting the base, then both sides of the tree pieces. Allow the paint to dry on each side for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so we're using watercolors and we're using the watercolors on wood. So wood absorbs things very, very well, especially watercolors. So it might not take that long for this to dry, um, but you'll see once you start painting, you can kind of see the water or the watercolor just get soaked up within our wood. So here's the base right here. And here's a little tip. Use the small sponge to paint large areas more quickly. So let's go ahead and get our sponge. Let's see, where is our sponge? Okay, so here's a pro tip. It says to use the small sponge to paint large areas more quickly. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is add some water to our watercolor. And I'm using my brush to just add the water in. I'm kind of moving it around in the watercolor to get that watercolor nice and ready for our sponge. And the more water you add in, sometimes the lighter the color will be, unless you mix it like I'm doing. So I'll just pull this up so you can see a little bit better. So you can kind of see 
it's nice and watery in here. So now we can go ahead and just dab our sponge in and you'll see how easy this is. So using it with the flat side on the surface is super helpful because you get to cover more surface with it, cover more area quicker. And when you're using the watercolor, you'll notice that wherever you go over, maybe like twice or three times, the watercolor actually becomes darker. All right, so I think I need to add some more water and just put some more drops in here, mix it around. And you don't have to waste that, you can just put it up like that. And here we go. So it really doesn't take very long at all. So we're creating the little piece of grassy land that our tree house lives on. Then we'll add some more water. And you just keep doing this until you have your whole base painted. There we go. And you can use the pot, the sponge for um, creating different techniques. So I'll just show you real quick. If you just kind of dab it like this, it actually looks a little bit like foliage or it gives it some texture. So once you finish covering the entire base with the green, you can always go over with another layer of green and do the more um, dotting approach like what I just showed you, rather than kind of like using it like a paintbrush and using it um, doing strokes with it like what we're doing right now. And just a reminder, like we said in the beginning, you want to um, cover your workspace with like newspaper or a tablecloth that you don't mind getting some watercolor on because your sponge might go off the base a little bit or off some of the pieces that you're painting. But watercolor is water-based, so it should come off pretty easy just in case you do get it on something. All right, and we're almost all done. So here we go. And if it does get on your fingers, which it probably will if you're using a sponge, it just comes off with soap and water. Very easy. Alright, let's try that. Oh, okay. This adds a lot of water at one time if you dip your sponge in the water and then in your paint. So it's a little harder to control how much water, but you could try that technique too. Okay, and we have our base all painted. And we'll do that little dotty technique a little bit. There we go, to give it a little bit of texture. And if you wanted, you could try grabbing another little color, like a little bit of blue, and dabbing that on there too, just to give it a little bit of variation. So then, since the base is still wet, it'll blend in. It won't be like a bright blue. It'll look more like a blue-green for some of these other little 
textural areas. And I'll show you. Up like that. So it's not too noticeable, but just gives it another little area of interest. Okay, so let's go ahead and wash out our sponge. There we go. And although it's still green, um, it's mostly washed out. You can just squeeze it up against the paper towel and you can see that it's clean. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to paint are our tree bases. So it's the same type of thing where we can use the sponge to cover the large areas and then we can use the brush and um, paint in where the leaves are with the green. So let's go ahead and do that. And this time I think what I'll do is similar to what I ended up doing, just dipping the sponge in and grabbing some brown because it does add a lot more water at one time and I think it might go a little quicker that way. Here we go. And since the wood is already brown, you don't have to cover the whole thing um, if you don't want to. You can let some of your wood show through. So if you want some of your wood to look lighter, just don't paint it. There you go. And now since this is a 3D object, which means you can see all sides of it, we're going to want to paint both sides of both pieces of the tree. So we'll paint this side, let it dry, and then we'll flip it over and paint the other side too. There we go. All set. Make sure our branches are covered. There we go. So we'll let this guy dry right up here and get this one done too. Grab another bit of water. Grab our brown. And if you accidentally get some brown where the leaves are going to be, like I did right there, don't worry. You can just cover it up with green. It'll just like look like a different color leaf. So maybe it's starting to become autumn and your leaf is turning color. Alright. And there we go. And we'll wash out our sponge. Oh, actually, we have a couple more pieces here. And those pieces are right here. So they have the leaves on them. They kind of look like antler horns, deer antlers. And one more. Here we go. So we'll put that aside and we'll get these done too. Our lovely little branches that will hold up our tree house. They're very important. And this guy. Now I'll go ahead and put our green leaves on all of these and then let these sides um, completely dry. And actually that's a really good point. You don't have to make all of these green. You can make them whatever color you want because leaves do come in many different colors. So it's up to you. Now the more water, like I was saying before, 
the more water you add to your watercolor, the lighter the color will be. But if you don't add too much water to your little watercolor pot, it'll be darker. Um, and the lighter the watercolor is, the more wood grain you'll see within your painting. But if it's darker, you might not see as much wood grain. So it's up to you however you want to paint it. There you go. And this one. So for my tree house, I think it's still late summer and all of the leaves are still pretty green. And don't forget the pieces that we started with. So, this is a nice broad paintbrush that covers area pretty quickly. And it doesn't really matter um, how you're painting on the wood, it's just absorbing the watercolor easily no matter which way you're stroking the paint on. Sometimes it does matter like when you're using watercolor on paper but with this wood it just absorbs it so quickly and so well it doesn't really matter. There you go. And this side. Okay, so right now, since we're all painting very um, intensely and enjoyably, I would like to take a minute and ask you all to go ahead and vote on what kind of tree do you think this tree is that's going to be holding our tree house? Do you think it's an oak tree? Do you think it's a maple tree? Or do you think it's an apple tree? So a little box will pop up on the screen and you can go ahead and vote as to which tree do you think this tree is that we're painting. All right, and I'll give you guys a couple minutes. We'll check our paint and see if it's dry yet. Oh no, that doesn't look dry yet. How are you? Mm. Nope, not dry yet. So we'll let those dry a little bit longer. And then we'll see. Okay, the results say People think this might be an oak tree. All right, thank you for voting. And we will continue on knowing that this is our oak tree. Okay, so moving on to our instructions. Once the base is dry, you can make a sealer to help protect it from water drops. In the paint tray lid, Use your brush to mix some glue with a few drops of water. Paint it on the base and let it dry. You may choose to leave your tree base unsealed. Dried water marks create cool patterns and textures. So I think I'd rather allow those cool patterns and textures to come if, if water does drip on my base. So I don't think I'll go ahead and do that. Um, oh, we had another pro tip up here. If you do run into any rough edges on your tree house or on your tree, we do give you a little bit of sandpaper so you can always just sand around those rough edges um, and it'll smooth them out really nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll flip our pieces over and paint the other side. And this 
just take a real quick look. How are our mats doing? You should see the mat starting to get a little bit darker, like you can see here, a little bit darker, which means it's absorbing the water well. And we want the top of the mat to look like this in order for our little chia seeds to grow. So if it isn't all dark like that, go ahead and just add a little bit more water with our little pipette and that will help speed up the process of the mat getting nice and moist. I'll do that on all of them. Just go ahead and push it down with your fingers a little bit and then you can just add some more water on the top and it will absorb in. So while we're painting we can have our mat absorbing the water that it needs. There we go. Okay. All right, we'll get our wonderful sponge and paint up the rest of our tree. So I'm wondering if we can do another little survey here. I'm wondering how many of you, how many of my friends out there actually have a tree house. So a box will pop up and you can answer yes I have a tree house or no I do not have a tree house or no I don't have a tree house but I would love to have a tree house. So, let's see all our friends out there who has tree houses. I never had a tree house, but I always thought they looked really fun and I wouldn't mind having one. So we'll have a couple minutes for you to answer. Wow, this was a really good tip to use a sponge to cover this large area with our watercolor paint. Okay, let's take a look at our survey. And it looks like... oh. Everybody seems to say that they do not have a treehouse, but they would like to have a treehouse. So until you get an actual treehouse, you can have this treehouse and play along with this. So we'll put these aside, let them dry. There we go. Flip these guys over and get them all painted in. Because we have some really cute details and little characters to introduce to you who also love a treehouse and to play in a treehouse. Now if you do have a treehouse, for those of you who answered that you actually do have a treehouse, maybe if you're doing this kit and after you do the kit, um, you have your parent or guardian post a picture of your finished product up on our social media account. Maybe you can take a picture of your actual treehouse and include that as well. I think that would be so fun to see. Okay. And our leaves. We'll green those up real quickly here. Green, green, green. Green, green, green. Oh, this is so relaxing. I love using watercolors. And you are done. 
all these little marks that I'm making with my paintbrush going off of these pieces are really fun too. There we go. That one's all done. And this one will be all done soon. Now, as you're painting these, wood is notable for warping sometimes. So if your wood starts to kind of bend a little bit as you're applying the watercolor to it, don't worry. The base that we have here will hold your wood in place. And if the branches bend a little bit, that's okay too because these slits they are made for your pieces to slide very easily together. And after you slide them in, if they're a little bit wiggly or if they look like, you know, a little curved because of the watercolor, that's okay because trees have very bendy branches at times. And it just looks more organic and natural. All right. So we're almost ready to move on. And if your water looks like it might need to be cleaned, if you think that your water looks a little too brown, you can go ahead and dump out your water and get some new. But I'm going to keep going with Mine as it is. It's not too bad. All right, so it says time to build the tree and the deck. All right, so since it's time to build, I'm putting my water over here. I'd rather not spill my water all over the place. So we'll just move everything over. And we'll put our watercolors away as well. Okay, so here's our base, and it says that assemble the, assemble, allow, okay, we're going to assemble and then glue, and then allow the glue to dry for five to ten minutes. Now what's important is noting where the front and the back of the base is. So it looks like we're going to want to turn it. The front is this side here that's got the shorter slit. The back has the longer slit. So we want to match up our pieces so they match what we're doing here. So this piece here, this is the first piece that we're going to put on. So you can see in our instructions, you just match it up and put it in. Just like this. All right. And then we're going to take this piece. And you can see there's a slot in here and a slot. I'll just take it out again. A slot right here. So we're going to put one slot over the other and push them down. So we'll put this guy back in. And we'll slot this together, just like that. And it goes nicely like that and fits right into the base. So now we'll use our glue and we'll glue the pieces together. So we're going to glue the base onto this base slot, just like that. We're going to glue up the side of the tree, turn it here, and we'll glue this and up the side of the tree. And you can kind of use the tip of your nozzle of the glue to kind of like push it in there. There we go. And up the side of the tree where that slot is. One more side. And although it's white right now, the glue will dry clear. 
So in about 15 minutes, you should see the white glue um, drying clear. Okay, so our deck. This piece here is our deck. Ta-da! So we want to put this right in the center here, just like that. And it fits just perfectly together. All right, now these are the branches and the leaves that we just painted. And you can slide those right in the top here. So just like that. And one more. So you can kind of see, well, let's see if that one fits a little better. Yeah, that one fits a little better there. You can kind of see that they create a little bit, I'll hold it up, kind of like a, a little U shape. And what's happening here is you've just created the areas in which we're going to add our trays. So when it's time, the tray will fit right in there um, in between the branches. All right, so we've attached our branches. Now it's time to attach our leaves. So our greenery that is in this bag. <laughs> this is our greenery and our super adorable little characters. So we have our froggy, we have our hedgehog, we have our owl, a little hamster friend, and a turtle. So they're all just going to hang out here while we put our leaves into our branches. So you can see these leaves whoop, they have like little areas of like kind of like a base and then little areas of branches themselves coming out. So you can kind of just squeeze them together and fit them in between the slots on your branches like that. So just squeeze it like that. And you're going to want to put some of these branches within the slots. And there's really no wrong way to do this. You're kind of just filling in the branches with these little fake greenery um, leaves. So once your chia seeds are done growing, you can always plant more, but you will always have some greenery on your treehouse when you're not growing anything. I need to squeeze those together a little bit more. There we go. Just like this. And right inside. Wow, our tree is definitely growing very rapidly. We're really starting to leaf out. There we go. A couple more. Slide right in. Okay, and we have a couple extra ones too. So, again, when you're not growing your chia seeds, you can always put these in your tray and put them inside the little areas where your tree house, your, your tree holds those little containers. Here we go. We'll just put those extra ones to the side. Okay, what's next? Gather the parts shown to make your tiny objects. So we definitely need a roof to our tree house and walls. 
So for our treehouse roof, let's put this guy up here for now. Each piece is actually labeled. So you can see this is part of the roof. This is also part of the roof. And let's see, our walls, our walls are not labeled, but you can match up the pieces to what you see in the instructions pretty easily. So that's our wall. Here's another piece of our wall. And the third piece has a little window in it. So that's like that. I'm going to push all the other pieces up here for right now. Okay, so for our tree house roof, fold the roof in half, then open and turn over. So we're going to need our card stock as well. So we're going to just punch out our card stock from here. And as the instructions say, fold the roof in half. And it is scored, so it's pretty easy to just fold it in half, just like that. Now we're going to just add some glue and then put the two wooden pieces inside. and then let them dry. So we'll do the kind of wiggly glue technique. You just go back and forth and around and about. There we go. And put our roof pieces in. Now you're going to want to keep a little bit of space in between so the the wooden pieces aren't touching in the center. So that way you can close your roof like this and they each piece, piece won't get in the way. So just leaving a little space in between is helpful. We'll put that aside to dry. All right, our treehouse walls. So slide the walls on. And you can see it's decorative on one side and it's not on the other. So the decorative side is going to be the outside. So we'll hold the inside facing us. So just like the tree, the tree, it's got slits, or slots I should say, and you just slide them on just like it shows in the instructions. So here's part of our actual tree house. And here's the other side. Slide it right on. So you can see all of the decorativeness is facing out. Now we'll want to glue the top. And you can actually add glue where the slots are as well. But we're going to glue the top, the roof, onto what we just created with the walls. Now these are still a little bit not dry yet, so I'm going to add the glue here and give that a little bit of time to dry too. And while we let those dry, we'll come back and add the roof on once it's dry a little bit more. So we'll put that to the side and try and let it dry pretty straight like that. You go over here too. Okay, so while we let that dry, we're going to make some cute little chairs for our little figurines to sit on. Okay, so we want to look for the pieces that are shown here that resemble chairs. So I can see some squares. Here's our little squares. There's two squares. There are four little pieces like this. One two, and there's our other three, and we need one more, so where is that one, here it is, four. Alright, so we're going to add our glue right away this time onto this little piece, right in the base. Ooh, that was kind of a lot, that's okay though. And then we're going to put this, slide this one right inside, just like that. 
So we'll let that sit. And then we're going to add a little bit of glue on the top of each of these pieces. So a little glue here and here. Let's straighten that up a little bit. And then we add the tabletop part to it. So that just slides right on like that. <laughs> it's so adorable. Oh, look at this cute little chair. <laughs> All right, let's test it out. Okay, Froggy, what do you think? Oh, you like it. Okay, cool. So, one chair down, one chair to go. Just like we did. A little bit of glue inside. Put our second piece on, just like that. A little bit of glue up on top. Boop. Boop. And this will hold it all together nicely. So now Froggy can have one of his friends come over and they can both sit down on their sweet little chairs. Alright, so there are actually stickers that go on top of the chairs that help them look more like chairs. So I'm going to go ahead and add these and you can see what I'm talking about. So it should fit right on top just like that. So sweet. And then we're making a table next. Similar to our chairs, the table has a little piece of wood um, a sticker that goes on top too, so we'll just keep this nearby. Alright, so for the table, these are the pieces that we're looking for to create the table. So two long uh, table legs and then the tabletop. So here is one long table leg. Here is the other long table leg and the tabletop. Alright, for this one we're just going to glue immediately the top onto the legs. So put that one on just like that. Hold it maybe for a couple seconds. Oh, maybe, maybe just flip it over like that and let it dry. And then this one will do the same. A little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue here. And then we'll slide that one on as well. So we're just letting our table kind of dry upside down. We can put our sticker on. Because it will stand. Oh, this furniture is adorable. Alright, sticker it up. And fits perfectly. All of these we'll put to the side because they are all done for now. The next thing is so fun. Um, it's a telescope. So our little animals can use their telescope to look up into the night sky. So our telescope has one, two, three pieces. And then there are, pe there are stickers for the telescope. So let's put those stickers on first and then put the telescope together. So the telescope stickers are actually the epoxy ones. So let's find our pieces. Here we go. Our telescope piece matches up the sticker very well. And then we need the piece, the stand for the telescope which looks like this. There's our stand. And then there's one more piece. Here we go. This is the other piece of the stand. Alright, so we'll put our telescope sticker on. Just try and match it up as best as you can. 
There we go. So that's one side. And then we'll flip it over. And we'll put the other side on. Just like that. And push it on. Like that. Okay. So we attach the stickers to both sides of the wooden telescope. Now we're going to glue the base, the little stand for the base, onto the actual base. So a little bit of glue right in here. Put our adorable little telescope base on it. <laughs> this is so cute. And now this little roundy part, this is where what's going to fit inside the slit. So here's the slit, here's the little roundy part. So that's what will fit kind of snugly inside. Oops, I want to put that back in there. Probably add a little bit more glue. So the fact that it's, it's a little bit snug, you're able to move the telescope up and down a little bit. So it's very cute. Oh yeah, and I'm going to add a little glue here. And we'll set that aside to dry. Okay, so now we have our tire swing. And our tire swing also has a few of these epoxy stickers. Our tire swing is labeled as tire swing. You can see here, tire swing. Oh, we'll put our cap back on our glue. Okay, so... Just put that on here, flip it over, put the other one on, great. The tire swing attaches to one of the branches on our tree with some embroidery floss. So let's set this aside here. And in our instructions, you can see which branch they recommend um, tying it to. So the branch that looks like it doesn't have any leaves on it, which let's bring it over here. It's right on the side over here. And I'll hold up our tree house, or our tree, so you can see. All my little friends have to stay to the side for a second. So this here is what we're looking for, and it is right here, you can see, it's this branch right here. So that's the perfect place for a tire swing, so our little friends can swing back and forth right there. So it says, tie the tire swing to this branch with the red or blue string. Use scissors to trim off the excess string. So here are our scissors. Here's our string. And you don't want to make it too long or else it won't swing. It might just lay on the ground. So you kind of want to measure a little bit how far down we should go. And you have to <clears throat> actually, let's tie our swing on first. So I'm doing just a regular knot where I've just put the string through the tire and I'm just going to tie it around like that and do another knot. Speed it up through here just like that. Okay, so now we can kind of hang it and see, making sure that it's not too low to the ground. So I'm going to cut it. And let's see if I can just 
We'll just prop our tree up here so you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing. So here's our string. We'll just tie it right around our branch. Just like this. One knot and two knots. Now I have it on its side like this just to try and show you um, how to tie it on. But you can work with the tree set up as it's meant to sit up on the table and it would probably be a lot easier to just tie it on like that. So, here we go. But we're all tied on now. Okay. Ooh, our bike is next. So, attach the stickers to both sides of the bike. Here's our bike. And again, we've got our wonderful epoxy stickers. So, just match up. The shapes is pretty easy. There's one side and my other side here. Be careful when you're taking this one off of the protective sheet because it is a little bit wiggly. There we go. Now our bike has a cute little stand. In order for it to stand up straight, you just put the back tire in the stand. And it, again, fits kind of snug. So this is what it looks like. There you go. Okay. We have a few more items. We've got our pizza, our guitar, our mailbox, and our fences. So just as we did with all of these other pieces, you can go ahead and put each piece on as it's noted. So they're labeled mailbox, our adorable little pizza plate for the pizza sticker. Let's do that one real quick here. So cute. Now our friends have something to eat. Yum! Here's the pizza box. Here's the guitar. Oh, I should do that one too. And just like the bike, the guitar and the mailbox have a little stand that goes with them so they stand upright. Here's our mailbox. And here's our mailbox. Mail. And the other side. Okay. For the fence, it does have us gluing the base of the fence onto the fence. So we'll grab all of these here. And I'm just going to do a couple because I think um, you guys all get the idea. So you can see there's a more detailed side of the fence, which have the little cut lines, and then the more plain side of the fence. So we want to make sure when we're setting up our uh, little treehouse set that we're putting the fence details to the outside. And all you do is add a little bit of glue to the base. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can just do each little side, like here and here. Boop, boop. And then put your fence in there. Just like that. 
then we'll set that guy aside to dry. Cool. And you can paint your fence if you'd like it to be red or whatever color you want. You can go ahead and paint your fence as well. So we'll just shove these guys to the side for now. Okay. Now back to our actual tree house house. We need to glue the roof on. So let's go back a couple pages in our instructions. And what we're doing is we're just adding glue around the top of our tree house so we can put the roof on top. So you get this wonderful overhead view of exactly where to put the glue. Here, here, and here. Nope. And then just fit your roof on top. Just like that. And kind of push it down so it will stay. And here's the side view. Here's the other side view. And here's our window view. Cute. So, there we go. All right. So next, let's see. Where are we? Decorate your tree house inside and out. So where we're going to put our actual, let's move all of this stuff over here. Move over. Okay. I'm bringing you back. Now we want to put our actual tree house on our platform just right in here. It just fits right easily in between our branches just like that. And I'll hold it to the side so you can see. Ta-da! So now what we can do come back here you I'm going to have to, yeah, I highly recommend putting your treehouse together um, standing upright like this. But there we go. Okay, so what you're given are two little tiny rugs. So you can put a rug inside of your treehouse, just like this. And I'll just hold it slightly up so you can see. You just put the rug, oop right inside of your treehouse like that and now you can put your little baby tiny little table inside you're basically just decorating your treehouse however you'd like and maybe the chairs just like this so it's hard for me to hold this up and actually show you, but you'll get the idea. Um, now, don't forget, you are given this awesome ladder as well. So you want to put your ladder up so one of your little friends can actually go up the ladder. This is our froggy friend going up the ladder. And oh my gosh, I'm up here in this awesome tree house. Yay! And maybe our little owl friend also goes up the ladder and has lunch with our little froggy friend. Boop, 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 boop. And guess what they're having for lunch? They're having pizza! What? Awesome! Who doesn't love pizza? So we can put the pizza on the table. Now it's up to you where you'd like to arrange all of your other little pieces and parts. So the bike, I'm going to park the bike down here because we don't want to have to carry the bike all the way up the ladder. We're going to put our telescope right here because I think that would be a great place, oops, a great place for Froggy to look up into the sky. Here we go up into the sky and see the stars. And what else do we have? We have a whole bunch of other stickers. So we have things like 
posters for your wall. So we have Van Gogh, a pirate map. We have some very fun artwork and other little items. Um, oh, this is really cute too. So these stickers here, you can put these on the trunk of your tree like there's an owl inside your tree or maybe a squirrel. There's squirrels all over my trees. So let's put this squirrel on our tree too. So there we go. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we needed our mats to soak up some more water. So let's bring those back and go back to page one. We need to put some chia seeds in here. So once your grow mats have absorbed the water, sprinkle a few seeds around each mat. Save the rest to replant later. Set the trays aside until your tree house is ready. Well, our tree house is all ready. So let's find those seeds. They're there. And our scissors. And I'm gonna just pour a couple of them into my hand before I pour them into the tray. Because I don't want to pour too many. If you put too many seeds in your tray, sometimes the seeds won't grow too, too well. So right now I have about this many seeds. Oof, you're given all of these seeds. So you're gonna save a lot of them. So this many seeds are gonna go into each tray and just pour them in just like that and as I mentioned earlier these are chia seeds and chia is notable for growing pretty quickly on anything that is damp or moist so these should begin growing quite quickly um, just put them in a little bit of a sunny spot and make sure that your mats are nice and wet so we'll put another few seeds in for this one. There we go. And our third one. There we go. And this is how many seeds we have left. So you have quite a few left to regrow at another time. So, all right. Now let's go ahead and put our little chia pots right in here. I just want to show you how well they fit in. They're so cute. Just like this. And this top-down view is perfect. So one, two, three. Very cute. We do have a couple little tips for growing our chia. All right, line up the trays. We already did that. In most cases, the seeds will begin to sprout in about two to three days. For best results, keep your tree house in a warm, sunny place. Use your dropper to water daily. So like I mentioned, we just want to make sure that our little grow mats are nice and damp so you can always just use your little dropper to add some more water as you need there you go hey thanks for creating with me i hope you had as much fun as i did uh, look for an email soon on how you can watch the videos again if you want to show us what you created we would love to see it so just ask an adult or older friend to post it up on our creativity for kids facebook group or tag creativity for kids on instagram wonderful so i hope you guys had a fun week of creating with me and go ahead and check out youtube creativity for kids to see all those videos again all right bye